Sunday is the Sunday of the Palms and the Passion. And, uh, and so I hope that each of you has both a bulletin as well as a palm. Um, I'll offer a couple of instructions about the service this morning. Um, you'll hear music playing as we go in, but we won't until everyone is and you have your hymnal open to where you'll find all glory, laud, and honor, hymn 344 in the ELW. Um, we do uh, want us to say um, our prayers and our thoughts are with David Gresham, our director. His uh, family, David's dad, died on Friday, and uh, he has gone to be with his mom and brother down in Florida. He'll be back Tuesday, um, but uh, we, and we pray for Kathy and Jack as well. Um, and so wanted to uh, mention also uh, our services for this weekend, our week of Holy Week, Maundy Thursday service with Holy Communion and the, and the opportunity for foot washing is at 7, uh, Good Friday service also at 7, and then Easter 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. next Sunday. Um, I just want to encourage you um, to, to think about who you would invite to worship next, e on next Sunday at Easter. There are a lot of people out there who would come to church if there were just somebody that would invite them. So think about who you might invite and I encourage you to, uh, to, to reach out and to uh, invite somebody to worship next Sunday. I also invite you to come a little bit early because we have a string that will be playing not only in the service but for some pre-service music. So make sure you get here at least 10 minutes early to enjoy that. With that, let's uh, begin with our opening liturgy. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on the colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for the redeeming of the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection we enter into life with you through the same jesus christ who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen let us go forth in peace
in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me in my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm responsibly. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my tears, my strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a dead. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies, 
and from those who persecute me. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Sixth and 27th chapters. You may be seated. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand in Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely, not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it. Disciples, 
and he went out to the porch, and another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrayed you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are the blood of money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded them. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. <coughs> then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now the festival of the governor, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner from the crowd, anyone who they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crowd, they put it on his head. 
they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by him derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now. And we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eli, Eli. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for a At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether the lives then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a linen, clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than seven first. Pilate said to them, You have a bar of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. 
So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to give you some time for a silent meditation. I listed about four questions there for you to consider in silence. I'll give you about five minutes and then I'll announce uh, the time for the anthem. Our worship continues to be in.
sustained from God's abundant mercy. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Make your church whole, O oh God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God, save those who suffer, O oh God, from the devastation of flooding and earthquakes in California and those recovering from tornadoes in Mississippi and Alabama. Help us to stand with those who have lost possessions, housing, family, and friends. Merciful God, heal us, O oh God, May your compassion abound for the students and staff at Covenant School in Nashville. Bring healing to the hearts and minds of those who bravely responded and peace that passes understanding to those who are grieving their children and family members who were killed. Turn our weariness into action that we may diligently advocate for solutions within government as well as those that emerge from all sectors of our society. Merciful God. Save the peoples of the earth, O oh God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep, especially in Ukraine, Iraq, South Sudan, the Middle East, Haiti, and Afghanistan. Merciful God. Save those who cry to you in any need, O God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful, and with those who are ill especially Ed, Tom and Donna, Lisa Matthew and their family, Donna, Paul, Al's family and friends, especially David, Kathy, Jack, and Sandra, Ginny, Caroline, Debbie, Edward, Robert, Juan, Dee and Bill, Ira, Sandy, Bill, Richard and Rosemary, Michael, Melinda and Hank, Betty, Susie, Dawn, Becky, Anna, Mike, Tony, John, Amy, the people of Living Waters Lutheran Church, and those we name before you now out loud or in our hearts. Merciful God, save us in your love, O oh God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, those who prepare the altar, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may share a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lord, 
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Amen. Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless your Lenten journey.
children of God, we have been fed and forgiven. Let us go forth and live out God's vision for us. To be one in the body of Christ, where God's transforming love is shared with all. Thanks to you to join us in the Fellowship Hall for some coffee and conversation.